Hello everyone, I hope you all are healthy, happy and taking the necessary precautions to stay safe. This is Pragatish Chaichandran from Zoho Sales IQ's marketing team and I'll be your host for today's session. If you have any questions during the session, please save them for the end. When we open for questions, drop it on the questions tab. Now, without wasting any of your precious moments, let's dive head down into today's agenda. Content should give actionable items. Let's say if I talk about churn for two hours, would that impart any knowledge? No, don't worry. I'm not going to talk about churn for two hours. What I want to convey is any educational content works only when it is delivered as actionable items. Hence, keeping that in mind, we are going to discuss only five key points. We'll discuss what is churn. Amongst many other metrics, you should track, analyze, learn, and incorporate into your strategy. Why is churn rate one of the vital metrics you should focus on? Third point, we'll discuss what causes churn. And then, if got your churn rate, what to do about that? What steps or methods or attitude you and your brand should imbibe to reduce the churn rate. We'll discuss that. And finally, we'll discuss how to analyze churn before we part ways. I promise I'm not going to use terms to which you'd have to search Google on a new tab. I'm going to explain everything via common words. Now, what is churn? When your customers stop paying and leave your product or service, we call that churn. Churn rate is the percentage of users who left with the total users you initially had. Uh, if you find this a little confusing, let me elaborate this with an example. Zilker is a subscription-based streaming platform that offers, it uses a great variety of movies, TV series, documentaries, and others for education, entertainment, and enlightenment purposes. By April 2022, they had 35,000 subscribers. In May, 4,600 users stopped paying for its subscription. Here, the churn rate for Zilka is the percentage of subscribers who left the platform with the total number of initial users. That would be 4,600 divided by 35,000. That is We've calculated Zilker's churn rate to be 13%. So what? What are we going to do with that? It is customary to quote one particular line in every discussion about churn rate. From a fact, it became gospel. And from there, it almost became a cliche. However, cliches do exist for a reason, don't they? What is that infamous gospel? Acquiring a new customer can cost 5 to 10 times more than retaining an existing customer. What does this mean? Let's take the Zilka scenario again. They have 35,000 paying users consuming their content. Let's assume the subscription cost $10 per month and they make $350,000 $350, per month. Let's assume Zilka spends $35,000 per month to keep their subscribers happy, which translates into a dollar per month per user. Zilka could spend that on improving the UI, delivering fast resolution to customer queries, offer promotions, or even an R&D. It doesn't matter. They are spending a dollar per month per user to keep the subscribers happy. However, to acquire new customers, Zilker has to do a lot of marketing to attract potential leads. They have to let them know how Zilker works and they have to inform them of the benefits they can get with their subscription. And they have to put them through funnels until they become paying customers. Planning and running such campaigns would cost Zilker a lot of money. In the example we discussed a few slides before, 
we took a scenario where 4,600 users left the platform. To bring in new 4,600 users, Zilker has to spend five to 10 times more than what they spend on their existing users. That is five to $10 per month per user, which is roughly about $23,000 to $46,000 for the last 4,600 users. Along with losing their revenue because of churn, Zilker has to spend more to keep the total users at 35,000. What do we learn from these examples? Retaining your customers costs less than acquiring new customers. Churn is real. And if you are under the impression that there are countless fishes and your product or brand can have a great catch every season, I'm sorry to say you are mistaken. If you are not carefully providing value to your customers, they will leave you. You'd have to spend more to acquire new customers. It is as simple as that. Why does churn happen? There are many reasons attributing to why customer churn happens. Among them, the majority think an increase in the cost of your product or service is the primary reason. Let me tell you, it is not. When the value your product or service gives your customers is less than the price they pay, churn happens. That is the primary reason. Would you believe if I say you can get away with increasing your price as long as it offers a great value to your customers? A PwC statistics say that companies that provide great user experience have a 16% premium on their offerings. Yes, you can in fact get away with increasing your price. But when the cost value imbalance happens, your customers will be looking at your alternatives already. Does that mean price doesn't have any influence on churn? It does for casual users. Not everyone will consume the product or service the way you intend it to be. Well, let me rephrase that. Not everyone will have the need to consume the product or service the way you intend it to be. There is a segment of people who would be buying your product or service just for casual purposes. They wouldn't need your product day and night, but only now and then. Since they don't benefit as much as your regular hardcore users, they already don't see the value of your product or service offering. When you increase your price, those casual users won't be willing to pay the additional increase and will look for a way to get out. There, churn follows. We've explored two scenarios that involve the cost of your product. Now we'll look into another important reason churn happens, disappointing customer support. Mind you, I didn't say bad because the world has woken up to the need for customer retention. And everyone is aware of the potential of excellent customer support. There might be some exceptions, but everyone tries to offer satisfying, if not good or excellent customer support. A survey conducted by American Express states that 33% of Americans say they'll consider switching companies after just a single instance of poor service. 33% refuse to give you a second chance when your support team makes a mistake. That's the power equation. Also, there is an additional social factor attached to it. When customers are disappointed with your support, they don't keep it to themselves. They express their frustration on social media platforms. They disapprove of your products when their friends or family ask for a review. And they'll give you bad ratings too. All these factors will hurt you more in the long run along with customers actually leaving your product. Customer experience. Even though the phrase customer experience has been in our vocabulary for the past four decades, it's been extensively exercised or implemented by brands only for the past four to five years. Now, what is customer experience? It is the wholesome experience your product or service provides to your users at every point of their interaction. Some instances would be, 
how easy was your onboarding process if they are a new user did they experience any issues how is your user interface is it user friendly or confusing how easy is it to contact your support team do you offer multiple support options such as chat phone or email are you engaging with your users are you sharing information about the new versions you are working on are you listening to your customer feedback are you implementing their suggestions it all comes under the umbrella of customer experience when you are not offering a wholesome customer experience churn happens you might see an overlap between customer support and customer experience here customer support as part of the wholesome customer experience but to highlight the need for excellent customer support if desired to add it as an individual factor here ultimately the quality of your product comes into the picture if you are offering a media cut product that doesn't have useful features and is filled with bugs it will not provide value to your customers it goes without saying when you lag behind your competitors in terms of your engineering quality churn happens is that all why churn happens no not at all there are many other factors involved some of them are uncontrollable too for example if a customers might be going through some financial crisis because of that they'd want to drop your product you cannot do anything about that a new leader might have come into your customers organization the leader might prefer your competitors product as they are used to it you cannot do anything about that your customers might have pivoted their modus operandi towards a new direction because of the pivoting they wouldn't need your product so they'd leave you cannot do anything about that these are some factors beyond your control that might lead to churning it would be best if you don't worry about that you should worry about the churning issues that are under your control so far we have discussed what churn is why is it an important metric and why churn happens now we are entering the solution segment of the session what we can do to reduce churn how to reduce churn churn is unavoidable even if you are a great brand offering a great product or service or support people would still leave you the streaming giant disney plus which bundled itself with hulu and espn plus gets a 5% churn rate however if you are not attending to churn it will go beyond the percentage that can actually hurt and harm your organization what should you do balancing value cost equation there is no alternative you have to provide the best value to your customers your product or service should be well must be good you have to offer features your users need it should be bug free and the ui shouldn't be clunky you cannot compromise on any of them and expect customers to stay with you that's why we are not going to discuss this solution we are assuming you offer an excellent competitive product or service and will discuss what else you can do to decrease churn identifying your ideal customers it's the responsibility of the brand to identify who its ideal customers are and go after them when an organization doesn't have a clear identity of their ideal customers they chase after and convert wrong fit customers you might wonder what's wrong with that as long as the customers are paying when you are signing wrong fit customers they can actually hurt your organization in the long run how your organization would spend time and money teaching them how to consume your product they wouldn't understand the purpose or what to do with your product they request features that are not in your road map but to accommodate those wrong fit customers you'd have to force your development team to work on those features your support team will get tired of those wrong fit customers and the whole team morale will get affected 
soon there will be chaos your organization's vision will be blurred and you will be moving in a completely wrong direction also when you sign up wrong fit customers they'll eventually find out that you are not going to be of any use to them and they leave to avoid this unnecessary churn be vigilant about who you want to take up as your customer have a vision and work on that customer first approach we hear a lot about being a customer first brand it's easier to say than practice because there isn't a checklist or rule book or established guidelines to become a customer first brand organizations known for their customer first approach invented their own rule book and went ahead while experimenting along the way if you are looking to adopt a customer first strategy you should look into what customer experiences how do your customers feel when using your product interacting with your ui or reporting an issue with your support agent how are your agents resolving those issues how are you engaging with your customers are you listening to their suggestions are you collecting feedback and are you acting on those feedback it all comes under customer experience and you have to imp- work to improve on these aspects to become a customer first brand customer support providing a wholesome customer experience also includes offering a great customer support when you provide amazing customer support more amazing things will happen to your brand a genesis report says one in three customers will pay more to receive a higher level of service by providing reliable and quality customer support you can actually increase the value of your brand and the cost of your product another report from temkin says after having a positive experience with the company 77% of customers would recommend it to a friend by providing excellent customer support you turn your customers into loyal and free spokespersons we are all aware of the potential of customers word of mouth campaigns they'd be doing your marketing for you at free of cost a mckinsey stat says satisfied customers are more likely to upgrade or add services and are less likely to cancel the baseline is when you make your customers satisfied you avoid churn there are other minor factors if ignored it that may result in increased churn rates a few firms will forget they have to renew sending a reminder before their actual renewal date would help them get it done a renewal transaction should would be declined due to external issues that would increase churn you have to look into the causes of such involuntary churn that happens in your industry to avoid them also have a discussion with your support team they'll have a clear idea about the mindset of your customers if they feel certain customers are unsatisfied and might be looking for alternatives proactively reach out to them ask if anything is bothering them or if they'd want some new features just by initiating this conversation you can hold them for a little longer they'll feel valued then you can work with them to provide what they want and help them see you are what they need you might wonder this is all theoretical and anyone could say these points but would it in fact reduce churn let me address that question with a story a netflix original story among the powerful competitors in the video streaming industry netflix is the one with a very low churn rate of 3.3% want to know what they do to keep the customer stay with them superior product they are not offering a mediocre product at a low cost to attract the audience they have a superior product and they stay up to date with their market competitors the users don't even feel bandwidth limitations latency issues or device compatibility challenges when using netflix it is designed to imitate flawless perfection balancing the value cost equation there would be many netflix subscribers among today's webinar audience too ask yourself 
Is Netflix subscription worth its price? Wouldn't you say, of course it is? Well, I'm assuming. Or at least wouldn't you say, ah, it's fine? Netflix grew to be such a perfect pastime activity, isn't it? By offering a variety of genres that satisfy all ages, it has almost become impossible to remove from our daily routine. Personalization to its core. You would have seen this when you are using Netflix. There would be a column that says your recommendations. Based on your watch and browsing history, Netflix algorithm would create a list of recommendations for you to watch. That's good, right? But you know what is impressive? The thumbnail you see in those recommendations is also explicitly picked for you. Based on your viewing history, their algorithm crunches the data and selects the perfect thumbnail to attract you in microseconds. Personalization is the keyword to earn and retain customer loyalty. And Netflix is practicing it to the T. Customer obsession. Netflix isn't just customer centric. It is a customer obsessed platform. If you look at their history, whenever their services are down, they instantly reach out to their customers and inform them of, about the issue instead of just waiting for the customer to reach them. By proactively initiating this conversation with the customers, Netflix manages to retain the loyalty of its users. If you had any experience talking to the customer support agents, you'd understand that all the agents are empowered to solve their customer queries instantly. By obsessing over offering a great customer experience to its subscribers, Netflix manages to reduce the churn rate to just 3.3%. Do you still think it is all theoretical? Well, if Netflix can do it, so can everyone. Analyzing churn. Yes, it is vital to keep churn records closer. But to understand churn, you have to look at the data. You'd miss the reasoning behind churn if you're only focusing on the numbers. Clarity lies in the detail. You'd have to look for the reason behind churn instead of assuming your business is not doing well. Let's take the Zilker scenario again. During May, they lost 4,600 subscribers and their churn rate is 13%. Instead of just assuming they are doing bad, let's look at the data. For example, among the 4,600 subscribers who left the platform, around 2,500 might not be interested in the streaming platforms at all. They accidentally subscribed and have forgot or were too lazy to cancel. At the end of May, the accidental users cancelled their subscriptions. Now the ideal long-term users who left Zilker come down to 2,100 users. That makes the churn rate 6%. Better, isn't it? That's why you shouldn't look at the churn numbers as the ultimate number determining your business. It should be dissected to understand what is happening beneath the surface. There isn't a single framework to go about analyzing churn. It depends on every brand and its clientele. You have to construct a new customized model to analyze, to analyze your brand. One thing to keep in mind is that when we analyze, it is important to club together similar customers to understand the churn numbers. Only then you will get an idea of what to do about that. For example, let's assume we are grouping our customers based on their geography. We notice companies from a certain geography are churning more. Instead of panicking, you could look into what might be the issue there. There could be some geopolitical issue. They might have faced some natural calamity. These are completely unrelated to your product and support offerings. You can focus on what to do with the reasoning you found in the situation. You could contact those firms to offer a temporary relief to keep using your product. You could offer them a discount or a free month of subscription. This only by analyzing the churn rate, you can come up with what you can do to rectify them. We've come to the last segment of the session. 
uh, before we proceed, let's do a small recap about the actionable steps or methods to reduce churn. Identify your ideal customers and bring them in. Balance your product or services value cost equation. Create an awesome customer experience to your customers and provide great customer support. Finally, analyze the churn data to understand the reasoning behind and act on them. If you are thinking, is there any tool that help us reduce customer churn? There isn't. Since multiple factors causes churn, developing a single tool to reduce them is not at all possible. But there are tools that you can employ to control or reduce some of the reasoning that causes churn. Zoho Sales IQ, a customer engagement intelligence platform, can help your customers instantly reach out to your support team. The platform offers multiple features that would arm your support agents to resolve your customer queries. Using the platform's automation offerings, you can make bots take care of your customer queries and give them easy access to the essential knowledge base at the right time, even when your support agents are offline. Zoho Sales IQ helps to provide a fantastic customer support experience and the intelligence platform will enhance your customer's overall engagement with your product or service. If you want to give it a try, you can schedule a demo with this or sign a free 15-day trial to know it for yourself. I hope you have found the webinar informative, engaging and actionable. If you like, you can also share any other tips that have worked for you with other participants. Before we part, let me remind you of the churn gospel. Acquiring a new customer can cost five to 10 times more than retaining an existing customer. 